Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Got a full step-by-step -step guide tonight on fitting a new timing belt and water pump on this 2007 Citroen C4. And it's a 1.6 petrol engine, a TU5JP. And just see, cam belt situated on this side. But I'm going to run through it step-by-step, -step, just showing you everything to get it off and replace it. So. Um, but it's the, the TU engine, you do get the, the little 1.1s um, and the 1.4s, they're a pretty similar setup, um, so just give you a good guide to doing them as well. Um, but I'll just show you what we've got in the kit. Basically got a new cam belt, if you check the description below at any point I'll put links to all the part numbers used and all the tools as well, and if there's any special tools or anything like that, and I'll put all the torque settings in there as well. Um, but yeah, we've got a cam belt, it's also a new, new tensioner there. There's an idler pulley, we've got some new bolts and studs there, and then the new water pump as well. So, um, Just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. Um, but to start with, we'll start getting some bits off and run you through a step at a time. So, uh, Also as well, obviously we, we are going to be using a two-poster ramp tonight, um, but it's, it's quite straightforward to do without a ramp. Or if I want using the ramp, all I do is just jack it up on the driver's side, just under the sill there. Just jack it up quite high and just get this driver's wheel off. It just make it a bit easier for access. So. First thing we're going to do with this one tonight, just before we get started, I'm just going to use a, cat, a drain um, a catch tray outside. And I'm just coming down the front of the, you've got the radiator here, and then the bottom hose on it there. I've got a, I'm just going to use a little hose clip tool, or you can use a flat bladed screwdriver. Undo that hose clip, crack the pipe off, and that'll just drain the coolant down. Obviously, we're going to need all that out, so I'm going to just save making a mess later on. Just as you've got the coolant dropping out, just want to take the radiator cap off as well. It'll just help it flow through a bit better. So now that we've dropped the coolant out, the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, get it up in the air, just take the wheel off. I'm just going to um, just get the arch liner back out of the way a little bit. And that'll just give us some access to the, uh, better access to the cam belt. Once we've done that, we'll lower it back down. Then I'll put a jack underneath the sump just to support the weight of the engine. Or we'll take the engine mount off. So. And then we'll just get that wheel off to start with. Right, so now I've got the wheel out of the way, we're just simply going to get the arch liner folded back. This will just give us a nice bit of room onto the uh, the crank pulley there. Um, to get this out of the way, you've got a few clips around it. This one there, they're just like a rivet style. This is uh, pushed in the middle. You just use a flat bladed screwdriver, pop that back, and you can pop the rivet out. Uh, there's another one in the centre there, another one at the back there. And then just coming underneath, a couple of torque screws just at the front here. So just get all them done, and then we'll just pull it back and fold it around the outside of the brake disc there. So with the arch liner tucked out of the way now, just got nice access to the bottom pulley here, which we're going to need to undo in a bit. So, um, But next step for now, I'm just going to drop it back down and put that jack underneath the engine. Um, just while it's up in the air, I'll just show you the sump here. We'll put the um, jack straight on that, but we might just use a block of wood just so it's not straight on the metal. And you could if you wanted to, um, just while it's up in the air, we'll get the auxiliary belt off. But uh, it's fairly straightforward from up the top, so I'll do that up there. But, all you want to do is just put a spanner on the centre bolt there on the tensioner and you can lever that off and take the belt off. I'll just run through that in a minute. Well, so now we've got that down, we're ready to take the engine mount off. And I'll just put, I've just put the jack underneath and just show you. Just put the jack on the sump there. All I'm going to do is just pump that up just to... Uh, just to take the weight of the engine there, so that when we undo these bolts, the engine doesn't drop right down. And I've got an E14 e-torque socket. I'm just going to take out these four mounting. Right, 
four bolts for the engine mount there. You see we've got two on the back, two on the front, and then three on there as well. So just whiz them off quick. Now that the main mount's off, we're just going to get these um, Torx bolts out there and you want a Torx 50 socket for them. And there's three in there, so there's one on the top, one down there, and another one just in the little gap there as well. So, so is them out next. Now, I've been using this battery ratchet a bit, uh, quite a bit in the video, and also the little impact driver, but I'll put some links to these because they're quite an handy bit of kit as well. Now, let's throw the mountain bracket off. The mountain bracket off. Next thing we're going to do is just take this auxiliary belt off. And all we need to do, put a 15mm spanner, you just want to put it on the tensioner there. And if you push it, to, you want to turn it clockwise like that, that'll take the load off. And while you're doing that, you can slip the belt off to the minute that's gone slack. So we'll just get that off next. Get the auxiliary belt out of the way. I haven't actually got an auxiliary belt tonight, but while you're doing a cam belt, it's always an under time to do the auxiliary belt. But I do know that this this should have had one fitted not too long back. You can just see it looks pretty good. If it's a bit warm, if you get your belt, flip it inside out see looking at the ribs there just sort of squeeze it up like that if it's a bit old it'll start to be all cracked and perished around there so this one's not too bad so we're just going to refit it tonight well, now that the belt's off the next step is going to be taking the cover off um we've got in all these little gaps there we've got some little six mil bolts we're going to take all them out there's quite a few around it be four or five of them uh, and then we're going to do some a little bit of a wire across the front here just on these little clips they just simply want pulling out the casing and then we're going to come down and we're going to undo these bolts see it a bit better from underneath here we've got some uh, 13 mil headed bolts just holding the outer crank pulley at the bottom crank pulley on there so we'll just do the undo them three bolts and take that off as well Once we've got the three bolts out, crank pulley itself might be a little bit tight. You might just have to give it a gentle tap with an hammer just to crack it off and free it off and get it out. Right, now that the uh, bottom pull is off, you can just see behind that we've got a few more 10mm bolts holding the bottom section of the cover on. So we've got one there, another one there, and one just that I'd not put the back there as well. So we'll just get them off next and we should be able to pull the whole cover off. There's the lower section of the casing, and we'll get it, get it up from the top and we'll get the top piece off. So we've now got full access to all the timing belt and um, we're going to be ready to take it off and swap it over. Um, but first of all, we're going to um, put it into the timing position, put the locking pins in. Um, you can just paint mark it all, but basically what we're going to do, just put the pins in the cams. These little holes there on each wheel, they're where the locking pins locate. And you can just see in the back there, that's one hole for one of them and the other one's there. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to get a um, socket on the bottom pulley there, just on that centre knot, I'll let you know what size that is in, min in a minute. I'm just going to turn it over until both of these lines on, both of these holes on the two top cams line up and we can pin them. I'll put links in the description below to the proper timing kit, the pin kit, um, but uh, I'll see if I've got some pins, if not I might use some bolts just to hold them that are the right size. So 
Now all I'm going to do tonight is just paint mark the crankshaft, the bottom pulley, rather than pin it up. Um, it's, I'm pretty confident doing that. You can, you can do that as well if, you, if you're happy to do that. It's, uh, it just saves a little bit more work. Um, but if you want to pin it correctly and you've got the correct timing kit, all you need to do, the actual proper pin for locking the crankshaft, if you come down this side, you've got your oil filter cap there, and then just down, I'll just try, I don't quite get it on the camera, but in this section behind the oil filter, there's a little hole in there and you'll have a pin that runs horizontally into the into a hole in the flywheel and locks the flywheel. And that's the official way to lock the actual crank shaft, but I'm just going to use a little paint mark and just mark it, mark it that way. So well, I'll just turn it over now and line the two cams up. Uh, that bottom bolt is actually you want a 22 mil socket. Uh, for that main centre nut there and all, all I've got is got it on some nice long extensions with a big bar it just means that I can crank it over from outside the wheel arch here just makes it a bit easier and obviously I'll just turn it over and just watching these timing holes so that I can line them up and lock them off in the right place So actually one too far off the right position there, so you can just see where it's landed now. It's just landed bang on in line, just through the holes there, and that locates with that hole at the back. I can simply lock them off. You haven't got to lock them off. Um, in these pulleys, I've got some other little marks on them as well. You could always, you could just paint mark them if you wanted. If I was going to do that, I'd normally land them in a sort of just sit them. If that was, you can see where that's landed there just use that and I just put like a paint mark on there just to gauge as long as it stays in the same position but because these have got the holes I've just got these studs that nicely fit in you just want something that fits in nice and snug so it, uh, they ain't got no movement on it at all but now that I can uh, put them in there I'm just going to come down the bottom here I've just got a little marker and I'm just going to simply put a paint mark on this outer pulley against the bottom there. I'll just do that quick now. You see there, just put a dab on there, a dab on the bottom, and sort of know, just take note of where the position you are when you're looking at it, so you sort of square on at it. And then also I will, I can't quite show you very clearly on here, but I'm just gonna put a little paint mark. It's a bit more accurate if you can get it on the back of the pulley there against the back and that way it's right next to it so it's a bit more clearer to see that you've got it bang on in the right place so just do that quick now as well i'll just show you quick i just made a bit of a mess with a red marker on there so i've scrapped that and i've gone with a, a white marker so i'm quite happy with your line on the bottom but so if i just thought i'd put this on for the video it's just a bit more um a bit more accurate um, but this white mark there i've just put a, a line along the edge of the pulley there and up and a little bit on the bolt there so it's just dead clear to see exactly where the position is so when we take the belt off we can make sure that it goes back on in the same position well now that that's marked these two were the two studs are in there we can simply now start to take the belt off the first step just going to undo the nut on the tensioner here that'll slacken the belt off and then we can uh, we'll get the belt off get the water pump off and get that swapped over i'll just get that tensioner nut off first and you go what a 13 mil spanner or a socket for your tension. Once you've loosened the nut, you can just simply use six mil Allen key, just pop that in that uh, locating hole next to that, and you can just slacken that off there. The belt's nice and slack now, so we can just get that off. The old cam belt out. I don't look too uh, too bad a condition. It's a bit hard to say really, but see it is a little bit perished if you pinch it up a bit. So, um, but we didn't know if this has had one before or not. So, we get a nice job uh, done and out of the way tonight. I'll just get rid of that. The next step now, I'm just going to undo that uh, 30 mil nut the rest of the way. Slide the tensioner out. We've got uh, an Allen key for the in the centre of the 
uh, idler pulley there that's obviously going to be swapped as well and the water pump is just this pulley down here as well so and um, it's got two 13 mils holding it on i think so we'll get them uh, we'll get all these pulleys off now when you take the water pump out it will just lose a bit of coolant as well so just get ready just to catch a bit of that as you drop it off Just something to be aware of um there's just a little locating peg just there that's to lock your tension on so when you put your mirror on i'll show you when we'll point it back anyway but that little locating peg lo locates into there on the back of the tensioner that's to hold that so and then to undo your idler pulley we're just going to want a another a six mil allen key again Now I've got, I'll run you through all the torque settings when we're uh, putting it all back together and I'll also put them in the description below if you want to check them at any point. Uh, once you've cracked your water pump off it might be a little bit tight so um, I'll just try this in a minute but basically it goes in it's got an o-ring on the inside um, I'll just put my bucket underneath just to catch any antifreeze as well. It is a little bit tight, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a pry with a bar just, just to try and uh, crack it off. Right, it's odds off for the video. It's actually uh, mega seized in that water pump. Normally they don't come out too bad, but that was actually bloody tight. Uh, when I was actually cracking it off, it did actually break a bit of the water pump off. So and I'd say it's maybe the original um, pump. I can't see the markings, but if if it isn't, it's been in a long time anyway. So it was well seized up. Um, but basically, all we had to do was just sort of knock it round a bit, and as soon as we get a gap, just. Uh, just knock the punch in the back a little bit just to crack it off and then eventually it come out. Yeah, next step now, we'll basically just clean that up, get the water pump fitted, get the idler on, get the tensioner on, and um, we'll just sit it on loosely, then we'll get the belt on. And uh, we'll run you through that all a step at a time. Yeah, so that's nicely cleaned up now. I'm just going to refit the new pump. I'll just put a little bit of um, grease or rubber lube just on the seal so it goes in nicely. Um, just make sure I don't trap it. Line it up and then we're going to torque the bolts up. And the correct torque setting for the bolts is 10 newton meters. Uh, we're using a digital torque wrench tonight. You don't have to use a digital one, use any torque wrench. But um, if you want using a torque wrench, 10 newton meters is quite a light nip, really. So you don't have to be uh, too tight then. So the water pump's nicely torqued up now. Next job, I'm just going to put the idler on. I've actually got a proper torque setting for this. If I was guessing, I'd say it was roughly about 15 newton meters. I'm just going to give that a light, uh, light nip though. And the idler pulley's got a lock tight on it, and it uh, comes with a new bolt as well. So. Just sort of check for, check the feel um, with the torque wrench, but I'd torque that up to 20 newton meters, and that's plenty enough. If you're talking it up, don't really want to be any more than that. Now the new in the kit, it does come with a new uh, stud for the tensioner there, so there's no wrong with ours. I'm not going to swap that over, and it does come with a new little pin if you want to replace that as well. But again, there's nothing wrong with that, so I'm going to leave both of them on tonight. 
And so we've got the new tensioner here. Obviously you need to locate that bit over that uh, little pin. And it's got a locking um, pin in it. You want to leave this in until the belt's on. Once the belt's on, we'll release that and then tension it up. And again, I'll run you through that. But if you just slot that over the uh, stud and just locate that groove. Just try to show you around the back. You can't quite see it, but it, uh, so it just locates on that little uh, pin there. So and once it's on the pin, you'll see that the pulley's sort of locked in position and can't move. So. Now I'm just going to wind the nut on loosely, uh, so I won't be able to move that yet. So I just put it on, just so it, just put it up to it, and then just slacken it off a bit. Let's see, I haven't properly nipped it. Uh, now that we're in this position, position we're going to get the, uh, we'll start looping the belt round. And um, before you put the belt on, just make sure that obviously two top cam pulleys you can't move at all because you've got the locking pins in. But just make sure your bottom one's nicely lined up, still. So. Uh, so we've got the new cam belt here when fitting a cam belt sometimes they come with arrows on this as uh, which is basically want to be facing the direction that the belt's turning over if it hasn't got arrows on you just want to fit it so the reading the, the writing's reading the direction it's going so and some belts do have actual timing marks on as well you can see this little line across there i'll have a few of them around it and that they'll probably correspond to the um little, little marks on the pulleys there another one that there, sorry, well, yeah, one there and one there. And if you want to use your, using your pins, you might find that they actually line up. But uh, all we're going to do now is work it around. I'm just going to keep it taut around this side, start start the crank, put it on, work it around the idler, around the two cams. And you want to leave your slackest side where the tensioner is. Obviously, the idea of the tensioner is to take up the slack. So uh, sometimes it's a bit of a two man job, and you might want someone holding it on the crankshaft while you loop it around. So I'll just get that loop round into position now. I'll just try line these up just to show you what I mean about them as well. Yeah, so we've just got that nicely looped round. It's nice and taut on this side. So we've got the slack side here and we've just got to tension it up yet, but I'll just run you through that. Um, but just to show you as well, their actual marks on the belt on this model do actually correspond with the timing marks on the pulleys as well. You see that line is there located with that. That one there locates with that. And then on the, um, I'll just try to show you from underneath, it's a little bit tricky, but on the bottom side of the crank pulley, there's a, you can see the line there, and then there's a, there's like a groove in the actual end of the crank pulley there you can see that that lines up with it as well so you could actually just use the timing belt to to mark it all up as well and um, but now we're just going to uh once this is on we're just going to pull this uh just going to pull the pin out that puts the tension on there the next thing we're going to get a six mil allen key and we're going to turn the tensioner and then we're going to be looking at this this little peg there with the arrow on it it's going to move round and we need to lock it Hold it in the position, well, it'll turn round and we need to get it to that position there. And when it's in the middle there, we're going to hold it with the Allen key while nipping the 13mm nut up. And I'll torque that up, and the torque settings um, 21 newton metres for that nut there. And that's all we're going to do now. We're just going to use 6mm Allen key. We'll turn it, turn it anti clockwise, and that will just turn that little peg up. I say we've got the torque wrench ready with a 30 mil on it, 21 newton meters. You just situate that just into the middle position there. I'm going to hold it still and then nip that up and send the nut up. I can't see it, so. It does sometimes just move it slightly. Just keep going. So we've got that nicely torqued now. You see it's slightly gone to the uh, far edge of that. As long as it's in that area, it's within tolerance. So quite happy at that. I'll just simply remove the Allen key. So now the belt's on, we're all torqued up. Next step is just to remove the pins. And all we're going to do now is we're going to do two full rotations of the crankshaft. And once we've done that, the two top pins should line up. So take all the pins out and just keep an eye on that bottom mark as you turn it over so two full rotations 
and then all we're going to do is just a simple check to make sure that everything's right and everything should line up in the same position so we'll just do that quick now Right, so we've spun that round twice now. Just see the uh, holes have lined up bang on there, bang on there, and the, our paint mark on the bottom. Doing off a little white one. And it's bang on in line as well. So I know the time is absolutely cock on now, so we can just start building it back up. Obviously, your little lines on the belts, uh, on the belt, they won't line up once they've been round once. So that's, uh, you just, as long as you check with your main timing marks, you're okay. So. As you can see, not too bad a job to do, really. Um, but we can just uh, whiz through putting everything back together, basically in the same order we took it off. And then all we're going to be left to do at the end is just bleeding the cooling system as well. But I'll run you through that at the end. Um, don't forget to check out the links in the description below. I'll put links to all the um, parts and where you can get them from at some decent prices as well. Um, we'll just fly through putting all this back together and getting the auxiliary belt back on next. coming up underneath i got that bottom cover on earlier on that little lower section of cover had to go on before the top cover next thing i'm going to do is just put the crank pulley on and uh, just nip them three bolts up there you might find that it turns the engine over slightly when you're nipping them up but i just want i think the torque setting is about 30 newton meters for them but uh, just a, a reasonable nip really you want on them three bolts so we'll get that on next It. Now that that's on, just going to do the same procedure as getting the belt on as we, as we did getting it off. Got the 15mm spanner ready on the tensioner, turn it clockwise and I'll release the, uh, take the load off it so we can loop the belt round and then put it on. When you've got it on, just make sure you've got it on all the ribs nicely. Right, so we're on there nicely then, we'll just release the tension and just see it's on all the uh, all the pulleys there, there's none of the ribs showing, so just if they're slightly off, just got to be careful when you strike it up, it might uh, throw the belt off if it's not uh, on nicely all the way around. So now that's on, we can get the engine mounting on. When putting the mounting on, we've got some dowels here, so you can't go wrong with that, it'll locate into place, but you might just have to sort of push the engine over slightly and just lower the jack a bit if you've been all in the height of it, just to locate it to, into position properly there as well. Just while we're finishing the last few bits, just to help um, just get the cooling system filled. It's always just ideal, just to just keep filling your header tank up, just let it uh, drop through a little bit, just to uh, just save a bit of time while you're building anything up. So we'll just start topping that up a little bit and then run through bleeding it at the end. Right, just ready to bleed it up now. I've actually done another job on this one tonight, um, put, the, put a new thermostat housing on it, which is just down here. And we need the bleed screw on it to bleed the cooling system is on the thermostat housing. And all we needed to do, I'll just, um, I've got a separate video on it, but I'll just cut in a little section of just removing the air box to get out. It's fairly straightforward really. There's just a <clears throat> hose clip at the back. You need to take this pipe off, a little 10 mil holding it down at the front. And there's a section of the air box here that there's a little clip and you can just pull that out. So and what we basically once it's off, <clears throat> all we're gonna need to do is once you've got your, your level up in your header tank there, just undo the bleed screw. You don't want to do it too tight. Um, it's only a little plastic clip like a tire valve cap. So just take that off. You'll notice when you first do it, I've just had this one off already. 
and water's coming out. But to start with, it'll just be air. Just let it till it's just flowing nicely, and you can just simply screw your cap back on. So they do break quite easily, these, so if they only want to lighten it. <coughs> now I've done that at this stage, we're then just going to start the engine up. We'll leave it running for about five, ten minutes, and then we'll just turn it off. We'll just crack that cap off again, just make sure there's no air left coming out of there. But we'll run it up, we'll also leave the cooling cap off as well. Just had it running for a few minutes, you should see now, we should have a little bit of air that's circulated and it'll just force it out the, the blade screw there. Also, just while it's running out, just make sure you keep your header tank topped up all the time. Looks like most of the air out now. So, once that's done, the only other thing you want to do is just when you're in the cab, just run the engine up and just make sure, just put the heater blower onto the hot position and just make sure you get hot air through as well. And that's just another sign that all your air is out of the system. So, um, but uh, yeah, we'll just get the rest of it built back up now and see it's not too bad a job to do. I uh, hope you liked the video and if you did, give it a quick thumbs up.